Hi, in this video I want to show you how to generate a histogram from a set of data you've got stored in a list on your calculator. And for this demonstration I'm going to use the data I have in list L1. And I entered this data in the first video. And you can find it in your book on page 87, question 31. And this question deals with generating frequency distribution tables and histograms. And I'm going to come back to it in a little bit. Once you've got your data entered into a list, the next thing I want you to do is to make sure that there are no other graphs being generated that might interfere with your histogram. And you can see here in the graphing view, it does look like something is being plotted. So I'm going to go into my Y equals menu and I see a function there and I'm going to clear that and that removes the plot. Next, I'm going to go into second stat plot and I'm going to press enter to select plot 1 which will be the location of my histogram. I'm going to press enter again to turn the plot on and then I'm going to choose the type of plot I want to make and that's the one I'm going to choose is the one that looks like a bar graph so it's the third one over in the top row. So I arrow over and highlight it and then press enter. The next thing I want to do is tell it where my data is. Uh, I need to specify what list I'm going to be plotting, and that's L1, so I can leave this one alone. Um, in frequency, you want to just leave that as 1. Now I can generate the histogram. I press zoom, and the choice I want to make here is number 9, zoom stat. And you can see it doesn't show. I'd have to scroll down to show it to you, or I can scroll up to loop around to the bottom of the list, and there you can see number 9 is zoom stat. So I just press 9 and that's going to cause the calculator to generate the histogram and the calculator is going to choose its own class limits and class width and if I press the trace key I can see what those are. The minimum value shown is going to be the lower class limit. So the first class ranges from 28 up to but not including 35.5 and there are four data points there. The next class ranges from 35.5 up to but not including 43 and there are three data points there. So what I want to point out here is the minimum value is what we call the lower class limit. But the max value that's shown is not actually the upper class limit. It's going to be the lower class limit of the next class over. Now, if I go back to the problem in the book, it specifies that the first class should have a lower class limit of 20 and a class width of 10. So what I want to do is show you how to change the parameters of your histogram. And to do that, I go to the window key. X min is the lower class limit of the first class. And the book specified that that should be 20. So I'm going to enter 20 to change that value. X max uh, specifies how much of the X axis you want shown in your graphing window. Uh, it doesn't really change the shape of the plot itself. So I'm going to leave that one alone. X scale is your class width, and the book specified a class width of 10. So I'll type in 10 and enter to change that. And you can see the calculator's adjusting the shape of the histogram for those parameters. You can press the graph key on your calculator to see it in your display. And if I press trace, I can see, again, my lower class limits and the number of values in each class. So that is how you generate histograms on your calculator and as you can see it's a fairly quick procedure once you've got the data in your calculator. Now you might, might be asking yourself well, why would I want to do it on my calculator if I need to draw it on a piece of paper anyway and the reason is this when you're asked to generate a histogram if you're not told what lower class limit to use or what class width to use there there really is no one right answer uh, about what histogram will best um, display the shape of a distribution. So you can go into your window menu and play around with these numbers until you get a histogram that you feel best displays the distribution. One thing to keep in mind is if you have too many classes you're going to flatten your distribution out and if you have too few classes all you're going to get is a lump. Let me show you what I mean. If I change my class width to let's say 5, you can see my plot has a lot more classes now and 
while it looks like it's still revealing an interesting shape to the distribution, you don't want to read too much into the data by these small dips that you've got revealed here. And if I change my class width to something like 20, you can see all I have is basically a three class lump and it doesn't reveal anything interesting about the distribution. So these are things that you can play around with until what you get what you feel is the best combination to display the histogram. So in watching this video, I hope that you'll take the time to enter some data and practice graphing histograms so that you get a feel for how to choose lower class limits and class widths.